Hey guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, you're going to be learning the theme tune to the anime film How's Moving Castle. Now, this lesson is extra special because it's our first lesson to feature our new teacher, Mika Kane. Now, as you guys heard in the performance, he's an incredible player, but I think you're going to find his teaching style to be equally as awesome. So let's take a step back. Let's talk a little bit about this arrangement because I got a chance to play through the entire piece. And I have to say that first off, it's a ton of fun. But secondly, I think it's going to be best suited for the advanced player. And what makes it challenging, in my opinion, is the chord work. There are a lot of chords and some of the shapes may be new to you you, or they may be shapes that you just don't use very often when playing fingerstyle arrangements. But there's also some shapes that require your left hand to do Olympic stretches. So if you are new to playing stretch chords that require your index finger to hang back here and your pinky to go woo, all the way up the neck, jump into this lesson. It's got three exercises that you can incorporate into your warm-up routine. So if you run these exercises every day for a few months, you'll start to notice that your left hand will gradually be increasing its reach. So let's talk a little bit about this lesson. So in this video, Mika is going to be teaching you the first half of the tune. But if you want to watch the part two lesson, which is going to cover the second half of the tune, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com, doing a search for the song name. You could even search How's Moving Castle. It should pull up that way as well. Now also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off to follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a great feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Mika to teach you how to play this, and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. Aloha everyone, my name is Mika Kane and welcome to today's lesson with Rock Class 101 where I'm going to go ahead and talk about my arrangement of the famous Japanese animation movie from Howl's Moving Castle. This is the merry-go-round waltz theme song from the movie, the, probably the most iconic song from the movie itself, written by Joe Hisaishi, one of my all-time favorite composers. So in today's breakdown of my arrangement, one quick note is that this arrangement calls for a high G tuned ukulele. Um, there are some parts where you could get away with playing like the whole entire piece with low G. About 5% of it will require you to play the melody with the high G on the G string or the top string. So technically you could force a low G arrangement with this or you could force it. Um, but ideally this was made with a high G tuning in mind. Um, but without further ado, let's just jump straight into this and let's enjoy it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So if we take a look at the first measure, this is technically the pickup measure before measure one, which is right next to it with this chord. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use our thumb to begin with this piece. And I would say about 70% of this song will be using your thumb to go ahead and play the whole arrangement. And the other 30% will call for your fingerstyle setup, 
which will have you, or for me, have me using my thumb, my index, and then my middle finger, just like that. And this is to pluck the melody that's going to either be on the G string or to pluck some of the filler notes that are located on the other strings. But for the beginning of the piece, we're going to go ahead and start with our thumb. So for the pickup measure, we're going to go ahead and place our index on the second fret C string right here. Put our middle finger on the third fret E string, just like that. And then we're going to end off with having our pinky on the sixth fret right here on the E string. And just a friendly reminder, this is a waltz rhythm. So it's going to go something like one, two, three, one, two, three. Have that nice kind of sway, um, like kind of rhythm. And the good thing about this song and this arrangement is that a majority of the rhythm, even though we're in this 3-4 rhythm, there's not going to be too many complicated rhythms. So for instance, if we look at the pickup measure, all of it's quarter notes. And then if we take a look and we start looking throughout, you know, just the first, say, 16 measures, you can see that there's no eighth notes. There's only quarter notes, half notes. And then say like on measure three, we have the dotted um, half note, which is going to take up the whole duration of the measure. So for the most part, this piece is very friendly in terms of rhythm. There are a few parts where there's going to be some eighth notes, and that's where we're going to either have our finger style hand or we're going to go ahead and just handle it when the time comes, right? So let's go ahead and jump into the pickup measure. So again, pointer right here, you're going to pluck the C string second fret. You're going to go ahead and pluck the, the E string with the middle finger, third fret, and then have your pinky pick the sixth fret, just like that. And then now moving into measure one, you're going to go ahead and use your index to bar the third fret, and then have your ring finger on the fifth fret A string, just like this. And you're going to go ahead and strum, and that's for two beats, so one, two. And then on the third beat, you're going to go ahead and pluck the A string one more time. So to put together the pickup and the first measure, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three. Just like that. Here's one more time with me counting out loud. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the second measure. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our ring finger and we're gonna slide it down to the third fret. And we're gonna go ahead and if you're able to, this is the most ideal way to hold um, this next chord of measure two. You're gonna go ahead and this is like a D7 chord, but you wanna be careful not to have your middle finger hit all of the strings, but only the top three strings. So you want your middle finger to bend to hit the top three strings while our ring finger will touch the third fret on the A string. So you're gonna get a D7 like this. And the reason you want your middle finger to be bent like this and not covering the whole thing is because immediately on beat two, you're gonna to have to have your index drop to the first measure. And you wanna make sure that your middle finger clears enough so that it's not buzzing or having a thumpy note. You wanna have it clear enough just so you can hear that first fret cleanly on the A string. And then you need to go ahead and let go on that zero. Okay, so measure two is gonna sound like this. So one, two, three. Oh, see, I, even I have to clear it a little more. So one, two, three to get it nice and clean. And then moving on to measure three, you're going to go ahead and drop into this G minor seven chord. So zero, two, one, one. Index is going to be flat on the bottom two strings while your middle finger will handle the second fret on the C string. And this is going to be a total of three counts. So one, two, three. As you can see, it's a dotted half note. It's going to have the whole duration of the measure. One, two, three. Three. So adding measure two and three, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to measure four. We're going to go ahead and have our index on the third fret of the E string. Then we're going to have our ring finger hit the sixth fret of the same string and then have our middle finger drop to the fifth fret A string, just like that. And that's going to be measure four just like that. And then this is one of the trickier chords in this whole entire arrangement. Um, you're gonna go ahead and bar the third fret and hopefully maybe if you have a tenor size or a baritone size, it's gonna be very tricky. If you have a tenor size, it won't be as terrible. Once you have the concert soprano size, it'll be easier to make the stretch. But no matter the size of the ukulele, this is the stretch you have to make. Notice how when I'm barring the third fret, I'm not exactly straight on. I have to angle my hand a little bit just so I can clear my pinky hitting these, this 10th fret right here. Okay, so trying to make your index straight and then trying to put your pinky on the 10 is just almost impossible. Um, maybe if you had a soprano or maybe if I was playing a concert size, it could, but on my tenor size, I have to go ahead and make my pointer a little bit of the angle facing the headstock like this. So 
you want to try and get a clean, as clean as possible cords, just like this. Now, one special note. One special thing to note is that if you look at my thumb, my thumb is all the way down here. And usually my rule of thumb is that I like to keep my thumb kind of in the upper half, you know, above the halfway point or kind of on the upper part of the neck like this. But for this case, because of the angle, you're going to have to bring your thumb all the way. I mean, literally down on the bottom so that I can get this nice stretch. Okay. So this is going to encompass two total beats. So one, two. And then on the third beat, you're going to go ahead and pluck the A string, that 10, on beat three. So try to play measure four and five. It's going to sound like this. One, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to measure six. This is where we're gonna go ahead and slide our bar chord up to the fifth fret, and we're gonna keep our pinky glued to that 10th fret right there on my dot. And we're gonna go ahead and strum, and this is gonna be a quarter note, so it's gonna count one. And then for that eighth fret, you wanna drop your ring finger on the eighth, right here, on the eighth fret, and then drop your middle finger on the sixth fret, just like that. And this is all gonna be one beat each. So you're gonna strum on beat one, drop your ring finger on beat two, drop your middle finger on beat three. Okay, and then now for measure seven, you're gonna go ahead and make like this D minor seven shape or this D minor chord with the C note right here. And we can go ahead and plop it up all the way to the eighth fret. So the finger is gonna be seven, seven for your middle finger, six for your index, and then ring finger will have eight. And you're gonna get this nice, beautiful G minor seven chord. Okay, so putting measure six and seven together with the count, it's gonna be just like this. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to measure nine. Sorry, measure eight. We're gonna go ahead and have our middle finger on the ninth fret right here. You're gonna have our ring finger on the 10th fret on the E string. And then we're gonna have our index on the eighth fret on the A string. It looks kind of like a G minor shape as if you're making a G minor chord, but we're sliding it all the way up to where your index is on the eighth fret like this. So you're gonna go ahead and pluck it one beat at a time. So nine, 10, eight, just like that. So this is measure eight. One, two, three. All right, now measure nine. This is gonna be a pretty tricky chord. It's another tricky chord just like this in the song. You're gonna go ahead and use your index to bar the ninth fret. You're gonna use your middle finger to bar the bottom three strings, not, not including the G string, bottom three. And then you're gonna have your pinky hit the 12th fret like this. So it's gonna look just like this. So bar the ninth fret, bottom three with your middle finger on the 10th fret, and then your pinky is gonna hit the A string 12th fret. And you're gonna get this really beautiful chord, dissonant chord. All right, so you're gonna have two beats. This chord will have two beats. So it's gonna be one, two. And then to hit that 10th fret, all you have to do is let go of your pinky because your middle finger is already hitting the 10th fret. So you can go one, two, three. One more time, one, two, three. All right, so if we combine measures eight and nine, it'll sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so we're getting into the stretch where all these chords pretty much between measure nine all the way up to the, I would say measure 12, I guess to the ending of the verse, which is measure 15. This is gonna be like your tricky run of chords. So. You might, you might want to spend a lot of time practicing these kind of funkier, really dissonant chord shapes, but they're so beautiful. And that's why I love Joe He's like, she's composition. He adds some of these beautiful harmonies in his piece. It's so beautiful when you play it all back to back. All right. So now measure 10, we're going to have to do this really funky fingering where you're going to have a open G string zero. Then you're going to have your middle finger bend to hit the ninth fret on both the C and E strings just like that. So my middle finger is clearing that A string because your index is gonna be on the eighth fret right there on the A string. So you wanna go ahead and have your thumb hit all of it. And this is the sound you're gonna get. It's the chord you're gonna get. Beautiful chord. Now, if you're able to, you wanna keep this note ringing. So what you wanna do is after you pluck it, this is gonna have one beat. Then you're gonna have your index come back to the seventh fret. And then you're gonna have it come back to the eighth fret like that. So putting it all together, it'd be like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. And very important to go ahead and make sure that you're clearing just enough so that the, the index can be heard. Just like that. 
All right. And then now going into measure 11, I know the numbers seem like it's all over the place, 7, 9, 8, 10. But essentially breaking it down, you're going to go ahead and bar the 7th fret with your index. Put your middle finger on the 8th fret E string, ring finger on the 9th fret C string, and then pinky on the 10th fret A string. Just like this. Really beautiful chord. Okay, and this is going to have two beats. So one, two. And to hit the 8th fret, you want to go ahead and try bend your middle finger. And you can go ahead and lift these other two fingers up if you want. So you can go... And make sure you can hit the eighth fret by bending your middle finger just like that. So combining measure 10, 11, here we go. So it's going to be one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or you can go ahead and let go of that if you want to. All right, and that's measure 10, 11. Now moving on, we're kind of past the super funky, trickier chords. And now we're going to go ahead and jump into measure 12, where you're going to bar the fifth fret just like this. And you can put your ring finger down on seven. So you're going to go ahead and activate like this F major seven chord. This is going to have two beats. So it's going to be one, two, and then you can lift your ring finger up to hit five because you're already barring the fifth fret. So one, two, three. And then after that, measure 13, we're going to go ahead and play like this G7 sus chord, but it's really like this kind of G minor 7 shape you putting your ring finger down. It's up to you if you want to hold it like this, like a G7, you spread your ring finger out, or if you want to go ahead and have it down like this. I would recommend, highly recommend this because what comes after you play this 0, 2, 1, 3 on measure 13, you have to hit the 1, so it'd be good if you're already holding this G minor 7 shape. So you can go ahead and strum on beat 1, let go of your ring finger, this is beat 2, and then beat three would be putting your ring finger back down, just like that. Okay, so measure 12 and measure 13 will sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, now finishing off the first part of the song or the, the, the verse of the song, we're going to go ahead and go back on measure 14 to this chord that we played earlier in the song. We're going to go ahead and bar the third fret, put your ring finger down on the fifth fret. And this is going to have one beat. Then beat two will let go of your ring finger, so you're hitting the three. And then go ahead and just sound off the E string because you're already holding the three with your bar chord. And then we can go ahead and turn our hand into this D chord. We're not going to hit the top string. We're just going to hit the bottom three C, E, A strings. And we're going to hold that for a total of three beats. So one, two, three. All right, so this is measure 14 and 15. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so we just finished pretty much the, the, the main theme of the song, the most recognizable part of the verse of the song. So let's take it all the way back to the very beginning of the piece where we start off with the pickup, which is the two, three, six. And let's play all the way up very slowly and I'll count everything out all the way to measure 15. All right, here we go. One, two, three. 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 Now, hopefully you folks aren't getting irritated with my voice counting the beats <laughs> as I'm playing the piece. So here is a uninterrupted without me counting out the beats. I'll play it really slow and you guys can go ahead and use this to practice the first 50 measures of the song. All right, here we go. I'll count us in. All right, here we go. One, two, three.
good. So the good thing about what we just covered is that if we go ahead and take a look at the next you know, lump of measures, the next 16 measures, um, a lot of it is pretty much redundant from the first 50 measures. Now, this is like a variation one or variation off the theme that was just introduced with, with what I just taught. Um, so I'll kind of go through fast on the measures that are similar, and then I'll go ahead and break down um, the measures that are different um, from the first 15 measures. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into measure 16. So this is going to be exactly the same as the beginning of what we just covered. So two, three, six, same bar, third fret with fifth fret. Same chords, the D7. Okay, so this is going to be all be the same. Now, the thing is on measure 20, this is where there's a slight variation. We have this kind of syncopated rhythm. And the two chords on measure 20, it's going to be the same D minor 7 shape that we had earlier where we played here. So you want to go ahead and play 5-5 five, five on the middle finger, and then 4 on the E string, and then ring finger is going to have the A string on the 6th fret. All right, and then the next chord, you're going to have to quickly switch to bar the 3rd fret, have your middle finger on the 4th fret E string, 5th fret C string on the ring finger, and then you're going to have your pinky sneak under there. You see this kind of G7 shape right here. So pinky is going to be on the 5 on the A string. So you have to play this to this. Now, I didn't write this in the tab, but a quick shortcut if this is too difficult, because it is very difficult to switch between these two chords like this, you can go ahead and for the second chord, rather than barring and playing this, kind of like B flat seven chord, you can go ahead and just drop into this G7 shape. Essentially, you're playing just these three fingers and you're pretty much taking out this bar chord. So if you can see it, you have this G7 shape. It's essentially this same shape, but just with these three fingers. But you have to be careful to only play the bottom three strings and not activate. I mean, it's a nice chord, but I think it'd be better if you just sounded off the bottom three strings just like that. So to, it, what it looks like in action, you can play this, then this. But if you want what I wrote in the tabs, you, you want to play it like this. So up to you. I'll try my best to play it just like this. All right. So now the rhythm's a little tricky, tricky because it's syncopated. So the way the rhythm breaks down is that you're going to have one and a half beats you're subdividing it pretty much like the three beats are cut in half. So you're having one and a half beats in the first chord, and then you're gonna have one and a half beats in the second chord. So if we were to subdivide the, the one, two, three, and add ands in between, so one and two and three and, essentially the first chord is gonna have the one and two, and then on that and of the two, that's when you're gonna go ahead and switch to this chord to carry out the duration of the measure. So really slowly, it would be something like this. So one and two and three and. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and so it has a different feel than the rest of the song because it's syncopated all right so that's measure 20 one two three one and two and three and just like that now going to measure 21 this part's also different technically we're playing this chord but we're reharmonizing it to playing like this g shape but we're going to move this g shape all the way to the 21st fret right here. oh sorry <laughs> 21st measure this is going to be the 10th fret right here okay so we're going to go ahead to 0 10 11 10 just like that for two beats and then on the third beat hit your hit your a string like that and then on measure 22, we're going to go ahead and bar the 8th fret like that. Have your ring, have your middle finger on the 9th fret of the C string. And then your ring finger on 10, just like this. And this is going to be a quarter note. And then right now, we're going to kind of run into our first set of 8th notes, two 8th notes. But before that, you're going to go ahead and drop your pinky on the 12th fret. And then you're going to go ahead and let go both of these fingers. And then we're going to have an 8th notes to hit the A and the G string, just like that. So putting together measure 21 and measure 22, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, and. And then now we can finish off that phrase on measure 23 where you can just slide this bar chord up to the 10th fret, just like this, and only hit up to the E string, just like this. Don't, don't sound off the A string, just like this. So putting together 21, 22, and 23, it'll sound like this. One, two, Three. One, two, three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. All right, so now we can go ahead and move on to measure 24. 
this is the same as before. We're going to have like this G minor shape. So 9, 10, 8. Measure 25 is exactly the same, this funky chord. Now, this is where you're going to have to switch one of the parts where you have to switch to your finger style. So the way I like to handle my finger style setup is I like to have my my thumb handle both the G and the C string when I have to pluck those strings. My index will handle the E string and my middle finger will handle the e, uh, the A string just like this. So it kind of looks kind of looks like this. All right, so this is probably one of the trickiest parts of the song, in my opinion. Overall, this whole song is tricky, but this part is uh, very tricky because we're going to have to pull off this campanella technique or this bell-like technique where we're going to have notes essentially ringing over each other. It's very difficult to kind of pull off, but if you can, it just adds such a vibrant, interesting harmonic kind of texture. So, like, so what you want to do is you want to set up... This is measure 26. You want to go ahead and have your middle finger cover the top three so it's like you're holding a d chord but you want to go ahead and cover it on the ninth fret so the top three strings g c e okay and then you're gonna go ahead and pluck the c and the e with your middle and your pointer fingers or your index fingers just like that and then you're gonna drop your index on the eighth fret a string just like that and you're gonna go ahead and this is gonna be eighth note so you're gonna have a one beat one and this is gonna be two and two and Right, this is eight on the A string and nine on the G string. And now to pull off this obnoxious chord, you want to go ahead and have your pinky on the 11th fret E string. So how's that for a weird chord? Yeah, it's a pretty tricky chord. <laughs> so you're going to have one beat of the nine nine. And then you're going to go ahead and have your index pluck the eighth, eighth note and then the, eight, the G string right here. And then drop your pinky to hit the 11 and then hit the nine again on the G string. So it's going to sound like this. It's such a dissonant sound, but if you can hit it, it sounds so beautiful because this is how it is in the song. Very dissonant, very juicy. I love it. So campanella is when you're having all the notes kind of ring over each other, at least two notes ringing over each other. So you have this really very just crunchy very dissonant sound. All right, so putting together just measure 26 really slowly. It's going to be one two, three. One, two, and three, and. One more time. One, two, three. One, two, and three, and. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to measure 27. We're going to go ahead and get out of this funky fingering and go ahead and drop. You can leave your, you can go ahead and put your middle finger down on the ninth fret, just like this, on the C string, index on the eighth fret E string, and then ring finger on the A string 10th fret. And you can go ahead and just pluck with your finger style. Or you can go ahead and do a roll like this or pluck. Just like that. And then after that, go ahead and pluck the eighth fret with your ring finger. Just like that. So it's going to be one, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and go into measure 28. You're going to bar the fifth fret just like this. And then you're going to pluck the middle two strings like this. You can either go ahead and use your your index and your thumb or still sorry index and middle finger to pluck the middle two or you can go ahead and use your thumb and pointer like i taught earlier or explained earlier but you want to pluck those two middle strings and then this part's a little tricky in terms of timing you want to go ahead and have your ring finger on the seventh fret and you see the tie with the pull off you want to make sure that this is eighth an eighth note each so it's going to be just like that so pull off the seventh fret to the fifth fret and then after that, you want to drop your middle finger on the G string to hit the six. And then immediately pluck that open A again with that bar chord there. So it's going to sound like this. One, two, and three, and. One more time. One, two, and three, and. Okay, so measure 27. One, and 28. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three, and. All right, now after that, measure 29, we're going to go ahead and drop our middle finger down to the E string, 6th fret, and you're going to pluck with your finger style hand only the G, E, and A, just like that, no C string. Again, you can pluck together, or you can go ahead and roll, whatever sound that you want, and we're going to go ahead and hold that for a beat, and then we have a string of 4 eighth notes, so 2 and 3 and, and the good thing is the 5, 5, 5, 6, you're already holding all of the correct notes, so you just have to pluck the uh, appropriate string, so G, A, G, E. So pluck together, one, two, and three, and 
one, two, and three, and that's measure 29. And then you want to go ahead and quickly switch on measure 30 to this kind of ace, half of A7. You're not, you don't have the pinky down. Your middle is going to be on the 6th fret G string, ring finger, 7th fret C string, and then index on 5th fret E string. And you're going to pluck the top three. So my finger saw hat is thumb, index, and middle like that. And you want to pluck that. And then you're going to drop your, your pinky on the 7th fret of the E string. And then have your index come down to 4. Just like that. So now this rhythm's a little tricky because you're gonna have to go one and two. It's it's essentially syncopated. So it's gonna be one and two and so one and two will be this chord. So one and two and then on the and of the two you drop your pinky and and then on the three you drop your index three. So it's gonna be one and two and three and one more time one two, three, one, and two, and three, and. All right, so now putting together measure 29 and 30. One, two, three. One, two, and three, and. One, and two, and three, and. And then you're gonna go ahead and drop into this D chord right here on measure 31, where you're gonna have your index on the bottom two strings right here on the 5th fret, and then your middle finger right here on the 6th uh, fret C string. Again, you can go ahead and roll, or you can just pluck together like that. So you can go ahead and do that, and then you're going to go ahead and pluck the 5 on the quarter note. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Measure 32, you're going to go ahead and switch to this fingering pointer right here. And then you're gonna drop your pinky on the five. So one, two, three. And then we're gonna go back to measure 33 to your middle finger going on the sixth fret. And then same thing, one beat each. One, two, three. And then you're gonna go ahead and hold two beats on measure 34. One, two. All right, so putting together measure 31 all the way to 34, the first half of 34, it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three. 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 And then you can drop your pinky to hit the five. And this is essentially the end of the theme or the, the variation one on the theme. And then we're gonna go into, say, the bridge or the chorus of the, of the song right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from measure 16. We're taking this chunk at a time. We're going to go on measure 16 and try to play very slowly all the way to measure 34, which is the end of the variation. All right, guys, so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun. This is an extra special one because it's our first lesson featuring Mika, who, as you guys have seen, is an amazing teacher and an amazing player. Now, I do want to give you a friendly reminder that if you want to jump into the part two lesson to learn the second half of this song, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com, doing a search for the song's name. You could even search for How's Moving Castle. It should pull up that way. Don't forget on that page where the tabs that you can print off to keep for your records, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer so you can literally hit play, watch that tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning the first half of this tune and we'll see you in the part two lesson. Take care.